Okay, starting off, you have app settings, which is where you can enter the name of the apps that you want the system to be able to interface with, their ID, the access key, and the email. And this is everything the system needs in order to interact with your app using the API. Next, we need to know the tables and slices that you would like the system to interface with. So you can come down here and enter in the names of the tables or slices. No, like low inventory, for instance, is a slice of location inventory. And I did that because it would be helpful to be able to just query the low inventory table to see if there's something versus trying to get it to work with this. You can see there's a little star next to the table. Anything, any table or slice that has changes that are still pending to be saved will have a little star next to them. That brings us down to the buttons. So we got a line of buttons here. The green one is a save button and it will save all of the changes into memory. Everything is saved into browser cache. Nothing is sent to a server. It's all saved right here on this device. So that when you hit save, the next time that you come back to this device and you load up the same app, you'll see the table is still there. So I'm going to delete that. That is not a real table. I'm gonna make sure that I save the deleting of the table. The wastebasket red button deletes all of the settings and everything for the currently selected app. You get a confirmation to make sure you don't delete anything on accident. There is an orange or yellow sync button. What this does is it sends a query to your app, one for each table, getting one record. And what it's looking for, what we do is we extract out of that record the columns because I don't care about the data, I just want the columns, because that then helps the system better understand how to mess with all of your data and understand how it all goes together. Once things are synced, if you come up and click on a table, it will show you the list of the columns that the system currently has for that table. And you can notice there's some buttons here so that we can kind of modify things. So you'll notice, like I have these, these top columns for this particular table, they're all kind of show, they're all extra stuff. So I don't need them, so I can just legitimately remove them and it'll make things easier for the AI. I also have the ability to indicate what column is the key, because again, this is gonna help the system better understand how everything goes together. It knows we're dealing with app sheet. So as soon as we start telling it tables and columns and key IDs, it's starting to get two plus two equals five four, whatever. <laughs> uh, all of the columns that you have selected to ignore, they all come down here into this list. And if you want, you can return them back into the list. Happy days. All of these settings are temporary. So you'll notice the table has a little star on it. I need to save all of my settings in order to lock those in. The rest of the buttons are all about data portability. So because all of the data is saved into browser cache and I'm not saving any of your API keys or any of this sensitive stuff in a server or a Google sheet, I'm not, none of this gets transmitted anywhere. It's just here. So if you go to a different device, you need some way to bring this information with you. That's what these two buttons down here are for. The purple one, will send you an email with all of the settings and configurations and everything for this device to your email. From there, you can then go to the next device, download that file to that device, and click this blue upload button, which will bring a file selector up where you can select the file that you downloaded and then that will upload all of those settings into this device. You have to refresh for everything to lock in, and that gives you a way to port things from device to device without me even having any remote clue what your things are, which is what I would prefer. So that is all of the app settings. That is the buttons that brings us down to voice settings. So these are all for the real-time API from OpenAI. So you can select the model that you would like to mess with. Uh, there's only two right now. And the difference between the two, uh, well, mini is a small one and the normal one is a bigger one. The mini can sometimes really struggle. Uh, so switching to the bigger one can often help. 
The problem right now is as things are in beta, the, the big one is a, basically an order of magnitude in cost more than the small one. So you doing things with the big one, you'll really start to rack up some costs if you're really using it a lot. Uh, so maybe stick with the small one and if it starts struggling, turn it off and switch to the big one. Um, you can select the voice that you want to use. You can uh, indicate the microphone sensitivity. This is all about when the, if you're in a loud environment or if the AI is constantly interrupting itself, you can turn this down and that will often help. Um, if it's not, if you find that the uh, transcript is kind of not working out very well. You can maybe turn this up and so maybe it's listening a little harder. The next one is how long to wait before answering. So it defaults to half a second, but you can turn this all the way up to five seconds. So this is after I'm done talking, how long should the AI wait before it starts talking? Uh, if it starts cutting you off or if you find, you know, you need a little more time to think as you're stringing things together, turn this up a little bit. It's pretty will help pretty good. The next one, show transcripts. So this will show a transcript of what you say and what the AI is saying down here inside the logs. If you want that, turn that on. Otherwise, turn it off. You've got a spot where you can enter in your API key. Perhaps in the future, I will do some sort of supported whatever where you don't have to do this and you just pay me and I pay for it or whatever. But for now, you can pay for all of your API costs. And I actually prefer this because this allows you to create a project over at platform.openai.com where you can kind of group all of the usage for this under this one API key under a project and see all of the usage really, really easy. And there's a few helpful links down here at the bottom. Okay, with all of that said, that now gives us the ability to where when I have everything entered, I can come down here and I can start a session. And when we do this, let's see if it works. Hello? Hi there, how can I assist you today? Okay. This is a prime example of, you see how there was nothing happening inside the log session? That is an example of an unstable session. The, the system is still in beta. The, the API that runs this from OpenAI is in beta itself. And so this kind of stuff happens. So when you start this and you see table schema sent to assistant and then you don't see anything else, that means it's not working. You need to turn it off and just start it over. Just like this, just like I just did. I see you've got tables for locations, location inventory, inventory adjustments, sites, and low inventory. How can I assist you with your app sheet data today? Let's see what's inside low inventory. Okay. The low inventory table contains items with stock levels below their set thresholds. For example, bottle five in the bar location currently has a low inventory status. Would you like more details or a specific analysis of this data? Uh, we actually need to make an inventory adjustment for that location. We can make an inventory adjustment for the bottle five in the bar location. Please provide the quantity and any notes for the adjustment. Yeah, we need to increase by two. Got it. I'll increase the inventory for bottle five in the bar location by two. Okay, so as you can see, the system has various different tools that it can use. One of them is the ability to query data from your table. And you can see here, so it'll show you the query that it's using. This is often helpful for debugging because you will know the query that will work. So you can usually tell it what's wrong when it gets it wrong. Um, you can see the output here. There you go. Happy days. Um, when you do a modification, it comes into a temporary window. So this is an example of adding a record. I could edit if I want. Um, but they all work the same way. The, everything has a two minute timeout. That's just to prevent any kind of accidental overwrites or anything. 
Um, any of these fields, you can click on them and you can modify them. So if I wanted this to be negative two, I can come in here and change it to negative two if I want. If I wanted to change the note, whatever, there you go. You can, that's what you can do. Um, happy days. And then when you're ready to go, you can just hit confirm and then this will send this off. And if everything is correct, yeah, okay, something didn't work. Well, actually, so maybe it did work because it's not showing an error about API stuff. And in fact, now that we see, here's a confirm add, here is the record itself returned, showing us that it did indeed work. All of this stuff is just, there's not a session active, so it can't send any of this stuff. But anyways, so you can see there are tools that you can use for adding. There's one for editing. I'm not giving it the ability to delete records. Maybe in the future we'll do that. It can query records. Uh, it also has the ability to do visualization. So if you have multiple things, you can ask it for bar and line and pie charts and whatever. Um, last things, uh, for a little more how to, there is a question mark up here. This will give you just a little more information about everything. And most importantly, when you run into problems, I need you to send me feedback. So press the little loudspeaker, bullhorn, whatever you want to call this thing up here, press this up here and it's going to create a feedback form where you can enter in your feedback and send that to me, and please send me every bit of feedback that you possibly have. I greatly appreciate it. All right, everybody, that's it for the AppSheet real-time chat overview. Let me know if you have any problems. Happy chatting.